Are you looking to create the perfect podcast name? Today, we're gonna be discussing how you can create a name that resonates with the audience and gets you found. Let's get into it. Do you wanna create the perfect name for your podcast? Today, I'm giving you all the secrets on how expert podcasters create names that are searchable and speak to the right audience. All these tips we covered in Clubhouse this week, and I just want to hit on some of the main points that are going to really help take the, your podcast name to the next level. Let's get into it. So a great podcast name always starts with your end user in mind. Getting to know your avatars, not just demographic, but psychographic is really important. What is the age range? What is the gender? What do they like? Where do they live? This is all really important demographic stuff, but the psychographic stuff is probably more important. When somebody lands and starts listening or even sees the name of your podcast the first time, what is the emotion that they feel on a psychographic level? And so what I mean by psychographic is what keeps them up at night? Where do they like to eat? What's the favorite type of music that your avatar likes to listen to? And to be fair, you might not know all the answers to this up front. Just do your best, try your best. And I think it's also important that there's a cycle to this. The more content you create, the more knowledge you're gonna get about your target audience. I also really wanna encourage you, don't let the name be the reason you don't start. Because if you find out that your perfect name or your perfect name that you think of right now doesn't end up being perfect, you can always change it. There's nothing wrong with changing your podcast name. Well, you don't wanna be changing your podcast name all the time because that's confusing, it can mess up links and backlinks, but it's okay to just get started and go back later and try to finish things and correct things. I always tell my team, done is better than perfect. And if you are always waiting for perfection, it's never gonna happen. Again, the goal of this video is to help you get your name as perfect as possible so you don't have to go back, but I don't want the name to be something that slows you up. At any rate, your name should really appeal to the target person that you really want to speak to. Super, super important. The next key here to having an amazing name for a podcast is to be clear and concise. This is, this is I mean, this is applies across the board to everything you do on social media. You gotta be clear and concise. Don't make me waste brain cells and burn calories just trying to figure out what your show is about. Try to be as clear and concise in your words as possible. I, I talk to copywriters, I talk to my team about this a lot too. After you write something out, go back in and try to remove half of the words. The more words that you use, the more confusing it tends to be. And the more time consuming it is as a Risk listener or reader. So I generally recommend keeping the actual digits to under 24 digits in the name. Now, another thing that we want to do is we want our name to be searchable. So we need to get an understanding of what people are searching for. And there's a couple great tools to do this. Answerthepublic.com is a great resource for finding out what people are searching for. You can use Google keyword tools like on YouTube or vidIQ. You can also just use the auto search function, the auto fill function on Google. Just go into Google and start typing in different words. Now, for me with the After Hours Entrepreneur, I started out by also looking at synonyms. So I would type in a particular word that I was thinking of, and I would look at what are other words that mean the same thing or similar thing. And then I would leverage those words. I put them all in a spreadsheet and I would look at those words and I would start typing them into Google. I'd start typing them into YouTube and I would type them into answerthepublic.com. It gives you a much better data-driven type of decision based on what people are actually searching for. And again, this is really important because people do search for new podcasts. I know I do. If I'm trying to learn about a new topic, whether it's website development or funnel hacking or whatever the topic is, I will go to Spotify and I will type in what I'm looking for. And if you show up, there's a much better chance that I'll listen. So make sure that you're really thoughtful about the actual words that you're putting in there. I find that generally speaking, it's much better to be clear than to be clever with the name of your show. Cleverness is, is not a winning victory. I've, I've tried and failed that. Try to be as clear as possible as to the value that someone's going to get when they click that listen button. Another thing that I did when I was coming up with the name of my show, The After Hours Entrepreneur, was I sat in my room for hours and hours and hours 
pacing back and forth, trying to figure out what the name of the show was going to be. And it took me a long freaking time. But when I got my aha moment was when I started explaining what my show was going to be about to other people. So I would encourage you to do that. Sit down and talk to other people, explain your show, answer questions about your show. And you're going to start to see these patterns where people will say, wow, that makes sense to me. I recognize what you're talking about and make it either a mental note or actually jot down a physical note of what people actually respond to and try to find the places where you have an overlap in what's searchable and what actually speaks to other human beings. Now, another thing that you can do is let's say the name of your show, The After Hours Entrepreneur, for example, is not as searchable as you might like. At the end of the searchability, you can simply add to some extra keywords to the end. So for example, my show is the After Hours Entrepreneur, a social media podcasting and YouTube show, right? So I was able to include additional keywords into the title. Now it is worth mentioning that you don't want to keyword stuff too hard. If you just start throwing in tons and tons of keywords, the the, the, the algorithms aren't going to like that. So you should Include some keywords, but just don't overdo it with the keywords in your title. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot, when you are creating and searching and doing your research on what people are searching for, at the end of your words, when you're in Google, at the end of your title, add in the word podcast. And that'll also give you an idea of some of the other podcasts that are out there that maybe have a similar or maybe even potentially the same name. I can tell you, it was really hard for me to come up with the name of my show because there's a lot of shows and a lot of websites that are already taken. So adding the keyword podcast, the end of whatever you think your title is going to be, is a good thing to do in your search phase. I don't typically recommend adding the word podcast to your actual title itself, but it is good when you're doing your keyword research and searching. If you follow these tactics, I know that you're going to come up with an amazing name for your podcast. So go out and create an amazing name. And by the way, if you're struggling to find the perfect name, join a community. The After Hours Entrepreneurs are here to support you. Leave leave a message or hit me up and I would love to work with you on creating the perfect name and, and sharing some of the resources that we have here to help you grow your podcast and reach more people. At the end of the day, we want to help you create better content in less time.